Hey what's going on guys Tanmay here for Telisco Learnings and in this video tutorial we are going to be taking a look at the switch case control statement in javascript so in the previous couple of videos we've been going through control statements the different types of control statements and in the previous video we also saw the if else control statement so if you have missed that video you can check it out in this playlist so coming to switch case in javascript so switch case is another control statement which is a conditional control statement just like if else control statement however the usage of switch case is a little bit different so switch case is generally preferred over the if else when there are n number of test cases needs to be tested which means that you have a lot of test cases a lot of conditions to be checked so for example let's say you are going to be taking a number from 1 to 100 from the user so let's say the user enters 1 and then in the output you have to print its textual form that is 1 okay similarly if he enters 2 you have to print 2 and this should go on till 100 okay so all this goes till 100 so you can see we have 100 different test cases to test and you can use the if else if and else control statements but then if you go ahead and do that the code will also increase a lot and it will not be very clean and again switch case is also much more efficient in terms of execution time compared to if else when it comes to larger test cases or larger quantities of test cases so this is why switch case is usually preferred in javascript when there are n number of test cases now this control statement that is switch case in javascript actually performs or works a little bit different compared to switch case in c++ or java so if you are coming from those programming languages switch case in javascript works a little bit different and we'll talk about that in a minute but let's first actually start off with the programming and let's see our first question So let me just quickly first read the question and then we'll start off with the programming and we'll see the syntax of how switch case works. So the question is we have to find day of week by accepting its number. For example, if we enter 1, then the output should be Sunday, so that's the first day of week. If we enter 2, the output should be Monday and so on and so forth. Okay, so 3 would be Tuesday, 4 would be Wednesday and so on. So here you can see we have 7 different conditions or test cases to be performed. And we can use if else and else if conditions but then as I mentioned that is not the efficient way to go ahead with and we can use switch case in this case. So let's quickly first create a variable. So I'm going to say where day and I'm just going to hard code the value as 1. So for simplicity again we are not taking input from the user from the web page because we still have to perform DOM manipulations and understand what are DOM manipulations. We'll come to that when we move ahead in this series. Okay, so this is how we start off with the syntax of switch case. So you just write in switch and inside that you pass the variable day. So since we want to check for what number we are going to be passing in this variable, we have to pass that variable in this opening and closing round brackets of the switch case. So this is the syntax and then opening and closing curly braces is for the body of the switch case. Now inside this we have to test for seven different cases starting from one to seven because we have seven days of week, right? So so here's how the syntax goes, you have to write down case and then you have to actually write down the value that the day variable is going to be holding. So the value is going to be ranging from 1 to 7, right? So I'm going to say 1 and then give a colon and below that I'm going to write what I want when the case is 1, okay? So I'm going to say document dot write in the h2 tag, I'm going to say Sunday. So if value of day is 1, you can see immediately we are getting an output of Sunday. So inside this I am also going to use a break statement. So remember break statement also helps us in control statements and managing the control statements. So what this statement does is, once we get our output, once we get our case, this break helps us to come out of the switch case. Okay. So obviously we are going to have multiple cases, right? So we are going to have case 2 also. So inside this, I'm just going to copy this and paste it over here and I'm going to say Monday, right? So again, I'm going to include one break over here. So if I don't actually include this break, what happens is the moment the program finds the right case. So right now our day variable is storing the value of one, right? Which means that case number one is going to be executed because we are checking if the value is one, right? So this case is going to be true. So if I remove this break over here, if I just comment it out, you can see along with Sunday, even Monday is getting printed. So what is happening is once the switch case finds the right case, if there is no break statement, all the cases below that case are going to be executed also. So that's why we have to include this break statement and this break statement helps us to get outside 
or get out of the switch case immediately otherwise all the rest of the cases are also going to be executed even though we are not needing them so i hope you get the idea why we are using the break statement also now similarly i'm just going to write all the cases for all the different days of week so we have seven cases so let me just show you all those cases okay so as you can see on the screen i have written all the different cases so we have case 1 case 2 case 3 till case 7 because we have seven days of week and depending upon what the variable value is if I say 6, the output is going to be Friday. If I say 7, it is going to be Saturday and so on and so forth. Now, along with this, what if I enter some random value? Okay, so let's say I enter 78. Now, obviously, we don't have a day of week which is corresponding to 78, right? So in that case, we can have one more case which is known as default. And this basically means that if any of the case doesn't work, so the switch case is going to go from case number 1 to 2 to, to 3 to 4 to 5 until the end and if it doesn't get any of the case right or true the default case is going to be executed so in that situation what i'm going to say is wrong input so as you can see we got wrong input and this default case is not necessary but if you just want to give the user a prompt that he's entered some wrong value you can always include this default case in the switch case okay so this was our program that is find the day of week by accepting its number so any number you put in you get the corresponding value if I say 1, I get Sunday. If I say 0, we get wrong input. So our program is working perfectly fine. Now I want to talk about switch case a little bit in detail because in JavaScript, switch case works a little bit different compared to in C++ or Java. So in JavaScript, switch case can accept numbers. It can also accept string values and can also accept Boolean values. Okay. So let me just first cut this program. Don't worry, I will be sharing all the code of this program in the video description you can also get some theory so make sure you check out the video description and coming back to this so this day can have a string you know so you can see monday and then in the switch case i can see case in double quotes i can say monday colon and the case i can see document dot write first working day so you can see we got the output and it's not in a larger font because I have to put it in h2 tag. So there you go, you can see. So you can see that it is accepting strings. Now we can also have a boolean value. So if I say true, so here I can see case true. And again, we are getting the output. Now again, one more thing that is different for the switch case in JavaScript is we can also pass in certain expressions or certain calculations in the switch case. So in the switch case, what I can do is, let's say if this is a string value, let's say I'm saying Tanmay. So in the switch case, what I can do is I can concatenate another string and I can say Sakpal, which is my surname. So totally it will be Tanmay space Sakpal, right? So in the switch case, it is Tanmay space Sakpal. So in the case, what I can do is I can say, I'm checking for Tanmay space Sakpal. And there you go, you got the output that's my name and that's how it goes so you can see that switch case in javascript has a little bit more functionality wherein you can add certain things in switch case extra compared to other general purpose programming languages and yes there are a few more differences and few more additions but i'm not going to complicate it in this video we'll see certain different variations of switch case in other video as we move ahead so i just wanted to talk about a little bit of differences in switch case that javascript has compared to other programming languages okay so that's it for this video guys i hope you got a good idea about what is switch case and when we use switch case and how switch case is different in javascript so thanks for watching see you guys in the next video peace